Noel Chambers. It's been a few weeks since we learned his name, a death so horrific that I had to take time to process it mentally to be able to talk about it. His case was brought to light by the Independent Commission of Investigations, also known as Indicom. In his quarterly report for 2020, Indicom examined the plight of persons detained at the Governor General or court's pleasure. And if you've never heard of Noel Chambers, brace yourself, it's going to get really heavy from here. Noel Chambers, an inmate of the Tower Street Adult Correctional Centre in Kingston, died a lonely and painful death in January this year. Indicom noted that Mr. Chambers, 81, was in a deplorable physical condition. If you haven't seen the pictures, be warned, they are very, very graphic. His clothing was filthy and his body showed evidence of chronic emaciation. He was covered with what appeared to be vermin bites, live bed bugs, aka chink, and he showed signs of having bed sores. Here's what we know about Mr. Chambers. He went to prison on February 4th, 1980, and was being held at the Governor General's pleasure, deemed unfit to plead to a charge of murder. For those who don't know, this is what often happens to people accused of a crime, but are too mentally ill to plead their case in court. And that is how Mr. Chambers spent 40 years without being tried or convicted of any offense. According to the Indicom report, on two occasions during those 40 years, Mr. Chambers received a fitness of, for trial certificate from two different psychiatrists in 2003 and 2009. Family members and a human rights attorney also tried without success to have his case heard in court. And before you ask how this could happen, perhaps you should go to the Indicom website and read the report for yourself. It identifies 146 persons so detained, of which at least 15 have been in prison for over 30 years. The law allows for the following persons to be detained at pleasure. Children found guilty of a capital offense, persons found unfit to plead by the court, or persons found by the court to be guilty of an offense but suffering from a mental disorder. And as Indicom reports, these detentions awaiting trial appear to exceed the maximum sentences following a conviction or the prevailing tariff for similar offenses. Meaning, many of these persons have been detained at pleasure for longer than any sentence they would have received if they were tried and found guilty. Noel Chambers' death so jarred the other prisoners that, according to the Gleaner, one of them wrote to the court begging for trial, stating that he did not want to die like Noel Chambers. George Williams was finally freed just last week, June 24, 2020, having faced no trial after his arrest for murder in 1970. At 71, he had spent 50 years lost in Jamaica's prison system. Yes, you heard that right. 50 years. 5-0. These cases have forced the government to acknowledge that there are systemic failures in the system and commit to review procedures for the treatment of inmates deemed unfit to plead. And the Gleaner quoted Prime Minister Holness as saying he was embarrassed when he saw the pictures of Mr. Chambers' condition and promised that the government was undertaking a process to make sure that people in the prison system for over 35 years without trial should be released. How do you give back a person 35 years or 50 years of their life? How do you even begin to deal with the fact that your family member languished in a filthy prison until they died so emaciated you can't count every bone in a damn body? To prevent another Noel Chambers from happening ever again, the government can start with the comprehensive Indicom report which concluded that the due process to review the cases of mentally ill persons held at the courts or Governor General's pleasure are not properly functioning, contributing to systemic breaches of human rights. Indicom's recommendations include an examination by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions of all the cases for those unfit to plead to determine whether or not there is still a viable prosecution available against these accused persons. And upon their release, there should be a written apology by the state and compensation awarded for the breach of their constitutional rights. And in the event of death, these remedies should be awarded to the family. 
At the time of this broadcast, there are still 145 persons detained at pleasure in Jamaican prisons. Review their cases, release who forget release, and compensate the people them. Where is the justice in keeping mentally ill people imprisoned for 30, 40, 50 years, much of independent Jamaica? All it looks like to me is that the so-called justice system has no justice at all.